Hello, I'm Marcus Sedgwick. Uh, I'm a writer and you might know me from books like The Raven Mysteries and Elf Girl and Raven Boy. I'm here uh, to tell you a little bit how to improve your descriptive writing, how to improve your descriptions both of people and also of scenes. There's some good news. Uh, I think a lot of people when they think, oh, I've got to write a descriptive scene uh, or I need to describe a character, they panic because they think they have to describe every single thing about the room that their character's just walked into. And the good news is you don't have to. Uh, in actual fact, it can be quite a mistake to try and do that. Some writers do it, but very few people do it successfully. If you do over-describe a scene, for example, you're at danger of committing the worst crime that a writer can commit. What's that? To be boring. Much better to keep it simple and keep your readers' interest. Remember that you're not painting a picture you're writing a story and you only need a few words to tell that story. They just have to be the right ones. Now, although I said uh, there's some good news, you don't need to go into long descriptions about what you're writing, there is some bad news too. Because you're only using a very few words, uh, they need to be very good words. So you need to think carefully uh, about what you're saying. Now, you could, for example, uh, you need to describe a building that's in your story and you could tell us the building is big. Well, fine, you could do that. Uh, but that's also potentially going to be quite boring. Much better to say, perhaps you describe the building as looming. And then not only have you told us that the building is big, you've also kind of implied that it's a little bit threatening too. You've almost brought it to life. And you did that with just one word. Let's say that your characters uh, walk into a restaurant. Now, how are you going to describe this scene? Uh, you could spend a very long time describing everything in the restaurant. Or you could just give us a few important, uh, well-chosen things about this restaurant. You could say there's a stale smell of vegetables in the air and you could say the carpet is crunchy. And at that point we're going to know this is not a very nice restaurant that we've walked into. It's really important to remember that you haven't just got one sense to use to describe things, you've got lots of senses to use. So don't just talk about things you can see, talk about things your characters can smell or hear as well. The English language actually has a bigger working vocabulary than many other languages. And we've been invaded many, many times over the years. We were invaded by the Romans, we were invaded by the Anglo-Saxons, uh, by the Vikings, by the Normans. And each one of those people brought their own language with us. So they brought Latin, and they brought Anglo-Saxon, and Old Norse, and French. And so English is actually a mixture of lots of different languages. And that means for any word you want to use, there's probably many different ways of saying it. But don't just reach for your thesaurus and start picking out uh, random words and trying to throw them into your story. You have to know what they mean. You have to choose the right one. You have to choose a word that is exactly right for the sentence uh, that you're writing. Let's have a little think about how to describe people. Now, again, uh, I think people often make the mistake of thinking they have to describe exactly how a character looks. And again, some writers do do that. It depends on the kind of book you're writing, but actually the way someone looks is very often the least important thing about them in a story. And it's actually much better to concentrate on their character. And by that we mean the things they say and the things they do. Now, you could, for example, describe a woman as beautiful, fine, but potentially a bit boring. But if you told me that when she walks in a room, everyone stops talking and looks towards her, that's much more interesting. We see the effect that she has on other people. To sum up, uh, when you're doing a piece of descriptive writing, my advice is to keep it simple. But don't go for the obvious words, the words you hear all the time. Try and think of the right interesting word, the word that's absolutely right for that sentence. Make full use of the wonderful, rich language that we have and enjoy it. Above all, always enjoy it.